when you let anything hang you up in your business and not you're not moving forward and you're not growing, right? I've seen others stay stuck, you know, slower, you know, get stuck at a million dollars, whatever it might be, right? Whereas for us, I was like, I don't know what the price is, just slap a tag on it, let's go sell it, doesn't matter, go, go, go. And, and because of that, we've been able to double, triple our business more so than the other guys because it's just keep moving. There's a, a lot of people starting an MSP business or really any business or even for those that are really looking to, you know, maybe they're shifting their business from break fix to managed services or just really looking to reinvent themselves in this cybersecurity thing. A lot of people ask, you know, what, what products do I need? What services should I offer? How much should I price this at? And I think a lot of people get caught up in the details and the minutia and I've got some tips and tricks to really just move fast and you know really be able to evolve or V2 your business pretty quickly and go to market and get new customers uh, and just keep moving. I'm Steven Taylor, this is Weekly ST where I usually wear the same t-shirt. For the last 10 years, I've been building a cybersecurity IT support company here in Chicagoland and I'm fascinated with living a wholly successful life. We talk about all this and more every single week. Please like, share, and subscribe. So for years, there's been a huge push in the IT industry to move from what we called break fix, you know, wait for the phone to ring, go fix it for somebody, being a firefighter, if you will, to move into managed services. And certainly now there's a doubling down on that with cybersecurity. And all of us in the IT industry have needed to evolve over time to keep up with these changes. And I've always looked at it as a pretty simple process in that, you know, what does the customer need? What is it, what is, what it should our industry require uh, of our clients and what things do we need to provide? And, and you can, you could go and find, you know, 15 different tools, services, products, third party vendors, whatever it might be. But really at, at the root of it, it's deciding what do you believe as the professional, as the trusted advisor is the most important stuff for your client go and offer those services, package them together, price them, right? And enforce that your clients, you know, uh, are up to that standard, right? Uh, and also listen to your clients, right? Our customers are telling us, our prospects in sales meetings are telling us. You know, when I first started our business and we really focused on a monthly all-inclusive, that wasn't necessarily because I dictated. I knew that managed service and monthly recurring revenue was the important way to go. But I also heard customers saying to us and prospects saying, we're tired of getting nickel and dime by our current provider. Okay, let's create a package that is the same monthly price for you every single month and make it stupid simple to do business with us, right? Our customers don't get a litany of list item details on their bill that you know each line item is another price and another thing that they don't understand. It's just, here's what we're charging you every month and yeah, here's the list of things that we do for you. And really that came from listening to our prospects in the sales process and designing our company around that. Very simple, very straightforward, and we can always be doing that you know, as we evolve and as we change. Us as the trusted advisor, right? There, our clients are coming to us going, well, you know IT better than us and we trust your recommendations and we trust your judgment. So go out to market, go find the vendors whom you believe in, whom you trust, who you believe are offering a service for your clients that is the, the right solution that's gonna keep them safe, that's gonna keep them protected, that's gonna make their technology work the best for them. And then price and package and offer it as a part of your monthly service or all inclusive, right? And it's not that hard to take on a new product that might cost $2 a user a month, you know, make sure you're getting enough spend out of your customers to roll that into your product and then you're not piecemealing and selling things ad hoc and you know nickel and diming so to speak just find ways to roll that into your agreements and you know increase your rates every year so that you're able to offer more services more value uh, on an ongoing basis because in technology nothing is constant we're always going to be changing so set yourself up for success with an agreement that increases every year so that you can offer more value, more services as things change. The, the package that we have today is gonna to be different next year, and that's okay, and it's necessary in our industry, right? But set yourself up for success so that you're able to do this stuff and not have to go back to your customer every six months or every year and say, hey, I've gotta, you know, I wanna upsell you this, I wanna, I wanna offer you this, I wanna sell you this, just say, hey, you know, your agreement went up, 
as per our contract or our agreement, and then you're able to roll in the new features, services, products, whatever it might be that you deem necessary as times change. Us classically as the engineers, we're always kind of looking for that validation or like, you know, uh, somebody's opinion to kind of validate what we already think. We get, we get a little bit skittish or we get a little bit nervous or unsure. And the reality is we're all very smart individuals who know what, you know, should be required of our clients or what products are great or things like that. Like just go with what you feel, right? And you're always able to change. I think we get so hung up and worried that we have to have it perfect, right? Everything has to be perfect. It, it really doesn't, right? We started to sell our cybersecurity package before it was even put together, before we even knew the bells and whistles and all the different things that we were gonna put in or how to deploy it and roll it out to our customers. I said, let's go sell it, right? Let's go to our customers and say, does this sound valuable to you? Does this sound important? And are you willing to spend money on it, right? Then when they did, then when they said yes, I went back to the team, I said, let's figure this out. And our first iteration is not the iteration that we have today. It's always changing because the industry changes, the market changes, our customers' needs change. But I think we get so hung up on trying to have it perfect or have it the right way. Just put it together the best you can today. Done is better than perfect. Go out and sell it and adjust accordingly, right? As the client's needs change, as the industries change, as the pricing changes, it's okay. It's never gonna be perfect, right? It's, it's a painting, it's a work in progress and that's just the way it is and it's okay. You've gotta have a check, you've gotta have a buyer, you've gotta have somebody who's ready to buy what you have, in my opinion, before you have it built, right? Like that's why Kickstarter is great. Kickstarter is this method of get a bunch of people to say yes with money, right? And then you know that it's worth your time and investment to build said product, right? And then they've already paid for it, right? You're not investing $50,000 of your own money, you know, to find out that you've got a dud or nobody wants to buy it. Again, cash and money is, you know, the validation or the yes that says, you know, you've got the right idea, go nuts. Now there is two schools of thought, right? When you're in startup mode, you chase dollars no matter where you can get it, right? Whether it's, you know, running to grandma's house to fix a computer for 50 bucks or doing, you know, this business is their servers down and you've got to kind of go put the fire out. But as you grow and as you scale, you do want to kind of frame that down into this is the way we do business, standardize and really stay in your lane because you don't want to be chasing shiny object or this, that, and the other thing. It'll really throw you off track and it doesn't lead to efficiency and profitability and good business. So in the long run, you know, you, you really will start to narrow down your focus. Now you have to be a visionary and you have to keep your eyes open to what's changing in the industry, what's changing in the world, right? Cybersecurity, I think in a drastic way, took us all by surprise in how effective and efficient those guys got at doing bad things to our customers and we all had to adjust. Uh, and so that is a huge core of our focus nowadays. We all need to learn to get out of our own way as entrepreneurs in a lot of different things, right? And packaging and pricing and all this stuff, just go sell, right? Put something together that you believe to be valuable, trust your gut, you know, slap a price tag on it, $150 a user a month is the industry standard for most of this stuff and just get selling, right? Don't let the minutia and the details and all that stuff get in the way from you growing your business because that is the most important thing.